Hi everyone, welcome to uh, this webinar today. I think let's just give maybe a minute or so uh, to get people into this webinar and then we'll get started. All right, I guess we can get the ball, ball, ball rolling. Um, good morning, afternoon, evening to everyone. Uh, welcome to this webinar today. My name is Elisa Lai from CLASP. Um, I work on the Verisol team and primarily manage the off-grid appliance testing and QA uh, for product use and appliance component. For the webinar today, I know, I hope you all know why you're here, <laughs> but we're very excited to share the new draft Verisol policy for certifying refrigerator which uh, essentially it's a set of quality standard for off-grid solar refrigerator. And this is a very important milestone for the Verisol program as we've been thinking about expanding the certification services to productive use equipment such as refrigerator. And before we launch the new certification services to, for refrigerator, we wanna really make sure that uh, the quality standards are meeting the needs of sector stakeholders. And so that's why we're all here today. Uh, during the webinar, we'll explain what's in the Verisol policy, and we would also very much like to hear your comments and feedback. Uh, without further ado, let's get this uh, webinar started. And so first, a few housekeeping reminders here. Uh, please mute yourself if you're, not, if you're not speaking, and I believe cur currently everyone's muted already. And if you would like to ask a question or make a comment during the webinar, please either raise your hand so that we would know that you would like to speak or uh, type in your question using the Q&A box. Um, and uh, I guess let's uh, do a very quick warm-up exercise by typing a new, a few words about yourself in the chat box and tell us what brings you to the, this webinar today. Um, and while you all are doing that, I'll uh, walk through the agenda today and introduce the speakers. Uh, you already know my name is Elisa Lai. I'm joined by three of my other colleagues from the Verisol team today. Uh, you will hear from Meg, Riley, and Tom throughout the webinar. Uh, and to quickly walk through the agenda, I'll provide a brief introduction about Verisol and explain why we develop quality standard for off-grid solar refrigerator. Uh, Meg will take everyone through the key points in the draft Verisol policy. And then Riley will give an overview on how testing and certification process may look like. Um, and Tom will explain the daily energy ser service calculation and the changes that we're making to accommodate refrigerators. We do have a Q&A session at the end, uh, but during the presentation, please keep the questions coming and we'll take these questions up during Q&A. Right. Um, for people who don't know about Verisol program yet, we'll provide, we provide a comprehensive uh, suite of quality assurance services for modern off-grid solar solutions. Uh, quality assurance is essential to off-grid solar market because it benefits all market stakeholders. Uh, we help market stakeholders make better informed purchase decisions based on comparable and consistent product data. We help reduce the risk for investors by giving them the tool to conduct due diligence based on product quality. Uh, we increase the impact of your business and programs by ensuring the product sold in the off-grid community perform as advertised, increase consumer confidence in off-grid solar products. We improve efficiency through having one single team address all your quality assurance needs. Um, Verisol program is very much a partnership of various donors and partners. Um, as you will see, some of our key donors here, we really appreciate their foundational support to the program. And there are actually several program components under a quality assurance framework, and these components kind of build upon each other. 
we deploy these different components based on a product's market maturity level. So as technology continue to mature, the QA framework also need to evolve uh, with the market. In the last couple of years, we start seeing the donor community has increased their uh, support uh, and resources to accelerate access to cooling, uh, to help refrigerator market to scale these market actors all need a consistent way to identify high quality products. And for the case of refrigerator, there's a lot of foundational support that has been laid by programs such as Efficiency for Access and Global Leap. Uh, Verisol is now taking this next step by developing a set of quality standards and a certification process for a refrigerator. And this is just to remind everyone, right? Certification service is actually not new to Verisol. We've been doing this for the past decades for Pico Solar and Solar Energy Kids. And now we're looking at uh, expanding into certification service for uh, beyond Solar Energy Kids with smaller uh, appliances. And so Solar Energy Kids with refrigerator as well as standalone refrigerator. And uh, with this, I'll pass on to Meg to talk about what's actually in the quality standard. Great, thank you, Elisa. So I'm going to just walk through the scope of the quality standards and also talk about the um, requirements that are included within them. So in general, the scope is fairly broad. We're looking at refrigerators and freezers for use on off-grid energy systems, so like solar home system kits or battery-based systems and mini grids, both AC and DC mini grids. Um, these, we have two different pathways that a refrigerator can be certified. The first pathway is a refrigerator that's included with a solar home system kit. So this would be a refrigerator that's specifically designed to be used with a specific solar home system kit that is also certified through the Verisol program. So that's one pathway. The second pathway is as a standalone refrigerator. So a refrigerator that's not associated with a specific solar home system kit. And I'm bringing these two pathways up because there are a few requirements that we'll go over that apply to only one pathway or the other pathway. And Riley will later in the webinar give you a little bit more information about the actual process of those pathways. Um, I think within the scope, another key factor that is worth um, bringing up is that we are excluding a few things from the scope. Um, first off, because solar home system kits certified through the Verisol program um, currently are not or cannot include AC outputs or AC loads, um, we can't certify a refrigerator, an AC refrigerator with a solar home system kit. So it can't use that first pathway. Um, but we will still certify AC refrigerators as standalone refrigerators. And we are looking into the future at um, trying to enable um, AC outputs to be used with solar home system kits, in which case we would expand as well. The second path, or the second group of refrigerators that are excluded are solar direct drive refrigerators. Um, these are refrigerators that operate without a battery. Um, and there are some specific requirements that or specific characteristics of these refrigerators um, that the requirements in the standards don't fully address. And so at this point, we are not certifying solar direct drive refrigerators, but we are looking into the possibility of including them in the future. And then thirdly, we are excluding vaccine refrigerators and ice pack freezers for medical purposes, primarily because these are already covered by the WHO performance quality and safety program. And we, um, we think that those should be should continue to be covered by that program. So now I want to get into what do the standards actually cover? The four broad categories we, we look at are truth in advertising and performance requirements, quality and durability, health and safety measures, and consumer information and warranty. If you're familiar with the standards that we use for solar home system kits, these fairly closely mirror those requirements. So for truth in advertising, this is the basis of the standards. Um, we want to ensure that products are performing as they are advertised. And test results from the global leap off and weak grid refrigerator test method will be used to check all advertised claims of the product. Um, 
and all numeric specifications have to be accurate within 15%. All features have to be functional and no statements should mislead buyers or end users. We also include a number of reporting requirements. So these are um, requirements that the product needs to be both the product and the, some consumer facing material, either a user manual or packaging or something that comes with the refrigerator would need to be marked with the manufacturer or vendor name and the model number, compartment volume sizes, um, the refrigerant type and the total mass, temperature class or use classes. So these are talking about what is the refrigerator intended to be used for and what is the the temperature that it can maintain at um, a 43 degree ambient temperature. And then we also have a requirement in the current draft standards that says that if the refrigerator, if, if it's being advertised as a refrigerator and it cannot maintain a temperature of four degrees Celsius or less, um, you do need to include a notice about temperature sensitive foods, such as the time required to lower the, or sorry, such as um, this product is not intended for long-term storage of temperature sensitive foods. We also have some re reporting requirements related to the energy or the, or the electrical characteristics. So these are um, a requirement of presenting the daily energy consumption, the, um, rated water, uh, rated voltage or the voltage range. And this would, if a refrigerator is intended to be used with a battery system, this would include stating the nominal battery voltage so that it can be properly matched to that battery system. Also stating the nature of the power supply, whether it's AC or DC or both. Um, the average power or average current for each applicable use case. So if it's a freezer, how, how much power does the freezer use? How much power does the refrigerator use? And then the maximum current for the, for the appliance. And then here are some runtime requirements that apply only to refrigerators that are submitted through that first pathway where the refrigerator is um, submitted with a specific solar home system kit. Um, these runtime, the first runtime requirement is that as the solar runtime of a refrigerator included with a solar home system kit shall be at least 24 hours. So that means when we talk about solar runtime, we're talking about the total time that a refrigerator can run after a single day of solar charging. Um, this runtime could be longer than what the um, battery can provide by itself if the battery fully charges during a day and there's excess energy that can be used during the day to power, power the refrigerator, or it could be shorter if the, if the battery does not fully charge during a day. The other requirement, and this is a requirement for all solar home system kits that are, that are certified, is that they have to present at least one combination solar runtime profile with all included appliances noted. Um, and in this solar runtime profile, when the refrigerator is included or in any other advertised profile where the refrigerator is included, we're saying that the solar runtime of the refrigerator has to be at least 24 hours. Additionally, the, sol the solar home system kit will need to present the full battery runtime of the refrigerator. There's no requirement of how long this has to be, but um, it, is, they, it needs to be stated. And to clarify, all of these runtimes will be evaluated using an adaptation of the energy services calculations that are presented in the test methods that we use for solar home system kits. And Tom is going to get into some more details later in the webinar, um, talking about how, how those are actually calculated. Okay, so now we're back to talking about all refrigerators and freezers with the performance requirements. These are some basic performance requirements that all, all products would need to meet. First, all refrigerators need to maintain a temperature of at least 12 degrees Celsius or less at 43 amb ambient temperature. 
and all freezers must maintain a temperature of zero Celsius or less. And then the pull down time for refrigerators must be less than eight hours. So that's the time required to lower the temperature of the refrigerator to its advertised temperature class. Um, and then we do have a one special requirement that's only, only for standalone refrigerators. And that is that we're, we would hold them to a minimum energy performance standard, um, basically to ensure that they meet basic energy efficiency goals. Um, this again, this only applies to standalone appliances. And, um, and the reason is because we assume that a refrigerator that is designed to be specifically used with a solar home system kit, um, the kit and the refrigerator have already been sized um, so that the energy needs of the refrigerator are properly met. And so the energy efficiency is less critical in that state, in that case. Okay, and then the next set of standards. So those were largely the, the reporting requirements, the truth in advertising and the, um, and the performance requirements. Now we have some health and safety requirements, um, essentially any ACDC power supplies that are accompany the refrigerator have to meet uh, basic safety standards. No hazardous substances may be included any flammable refrigerants should be marked and include warnings. Um, all refrigerants and foam blowing agents must meet environmental regulations um, and be in accordance with the Mon Montreal Protocol. And refrigerators must meet the requirements of IEC 60335-1. And one of um, the the specific test methods that are designed for, uh, for the specific refrigerator types. For quality and durability, um, we have, again, they need to meet IEC 60335-1, which is a, um, covers both the quality and durability and safety aspects of the refrigerators. And then they also must, um, through that time, through the, Global LEAP quality assessment, they must meet all of the requirements for packaging, user safety, design and durability, maintenance and repairability, and environmental impact cons considerations. Um, within, that within that test method, they, they can receive a rating of good, fair, or poor for each of those aspects. And in those cases, they have to receive a rating of good or fair to meet the standards. And then finally, there are a few consumer information requirements. Firstly, um, all refrigerators must be covered by a two-year warranty. They also must be labeled with the date of manufacturer or a serial number with a traceable date. And they must include a user manual that covers installation, use, and maintenance of the refrigerator. And finally, for kits that are included with a refrigerator, um, they have to include instructions on how to connect the refrigerator to the kit. And that's, that's the overview. I'm, Elisa, do we want to take questions on the standards right now or wait till the end of the webinar? I actually think we can wait. I, I see there's one question coming related to the solar direct dry refrigerator. Um, but I think we can address this uh, in the Q&A session. Okay, perfect. Great, thanks Meg. So for the overview of the testing and certification process, first I'm gonna walk you through the two main pathways to get your refrigerator certified, as well as the step-by-step -step process for both. Uh, then we'll answer some FAQs about the process and then um, of course, feel free to ask questions um, during the presentation. So I know Meg already touched on this, but there's two main ways that you can get your refrigerator certified. Uh, the first is as a standalone refrigerator. So this means just the refrigerator itself is getting certified, not the solar energy system that's sold with it. So once these products are certified, the refrigerator will get listed on the Verisol product database for standalone refrigerators. 
Um, this database actually includes other refrigerators that we've tested but haven't certified. So those that have been certified will get this quality ver verified um, tag on it. The second pathway is for a refrigerator to get certified as part of a solar home system kit or a product family. Um, so this means that re the refrigerator will be certified alongside a PV module, battery, lighting, and then other optional appliances like a TV, uh, radio, or fan. Some of you might already be familiar with this process of certifying a solar home system kit, um, but I'll walk you through that on the next slide uh, just to give a quick overview. And then, uh, sorry, just going back a slide, uh, there's also an option for refrigerators to be certified as both. So to be certified as a standalone appliance and then also as part of a solar home system kit. So let's say that you get your refrigerator certified as part of a solar home system kit, but you also want it listed on the database for standalone refrigerators. So for an additional fee, Verisol can do an evaluation of the existing test results um, just to verify that it meets the requirements for the standalone refrigerators. And then similarly, let's say you get your refrigerator certified as a standalone appliance, and then you decide later on that you wanna add it to a solar home system kit. Uh, you can do that. Some additional testing will likely be required, um, but that's an option as well. So you can get it certified standalone as part of a kit, or you can do both. So I'm gonna walk you through uh, the step-by-step -step process to get your refrigerator certified. Um, on the top row, you'll see just like the step-by-step -step process. So from contacting Verisol to getting it listed on the database. The second row are the requirements for certifying your product as a standalone refrigerator, as you'll see indicated by the uh, refrigerator icon. And then on the third row are the requirements for getting your refrigerator certified as a solar energy kit. Um, all of the requirements that are listed in the standalone row are also required uh, for getting your refrigerator certified as a solar energy kit. These are just some additional steps you need to take to get that solar energy kit certified. So uh, the first step is to contact Verisol and complete some basic uh, product information. We recommend reaching out to us uh, around five months in advance of when you're interested in getting your refrigerator certified. Um, after you've submitted this basic product information, you'll sign an agreement with Verisol, and you'll also sign an agreement directly with our refrigerator test lab. Um, so we are currently testing refrigerators with Regent and the Netherlands. Um, and so uh, companies will just contract directly with, with the refrigerator test lab. If you're also getting your refrigerator certified as part of a solar home system kit, then you'll need to sign a separate agreement with a test lab that's qualified to test uh, solar home system kits. The second step after we have all of the information we need and an agreement has been signed is that we'll conduct random sampling. So random sampling is done to eliminate any um, preferential selection of samples and just make sure that we have uh, representative uh, samples for testing. So for refrigerators, we will work with our random sampling agent, likely um, Intertech, to randomly select two refrigerators from a minimum stock of 20 units. So we'll use only one of the refrigerators for testing, and then the other one will be used as a backup in case there's damage during uh, shipping or anything like that. If you're also getting a solar energy kit, uh, test or certified, then you'll be required to uh, do sampling. It's a little bit different. Um, it'll be done according to Verisol's uh, sampling policy. Um, and if you have a refrigerator and a solar energy kit in um, different warehouses, that's fine. We can just do the sampling separately. Um, and then companies are required to ship their products to the test lab for testing. So they'll be required to ship their refrigerator to our refrigerator test lab. And if you're getting a solar energy kit certified, then you'll also ship that to um, the solar energy kit test lab. Uh, the next step is product testing. So ref all refrigerators are tested, uh, conducting according to the Global Leap off-grid refrigerator test methods. And then they'll be evaluated to the standards that Meg just presented on. For solar energy kits, um, Refrigerators that are certified through this pathway will have to undergo some additional testing. Um, and then for the solar energy kit itself, it will be tested, conducted according to 62257-9-5. 
um, and then evaluated to dash nine dash eight. And those are the test methods and quality standards for solar home system, or sorry, solar energy kits up to 350 watts. And then after testing is complete, Verisol will send you the test report, test report evaluation results, and then any corrective measures that are needed for certification. Uh, products that don't meet all the requirements that are outlined in the standards can also undergo full or partial retesting to address these issues. And then if any of the issues are related to uh, consumer facing materials like user manual or packaging, uh, companies can send just photographic evidence that the changes have been made and a timeline for uh, when these changes will be implemented more broadly. And then lastly, if the refrigerator or solar home system kit meets our standards, it'll be listed on the database uh, for standalone refrigerators listed on the um, standalone database and then solar energy kits along uh, in the solar energy kit database. And on the next slide, you'll see um, just like a deeper dive of how this could look. Um, so for standalone refrigerators, uh, as I mentioned, this database includes uh, refrigerators that have been tested, um, but not certified. So those that have been certified will have a clear distinction um, with a quality verified symbol uh, so that people can easily access those certified refrigerators. When you click into each refrigerator listing, it'll include detailed testing information about the refrigerator itself. Um, the, if you certify your refrigerator as part of a solar home system kit or family, it will be included in that kit's specification sheet or specification book. Um, and then lastly, if you choose to do both options, you can get it listed in, in both databases. And then these are just some uh, questions, FAQs, and then we'd love to hear from you all if you have more. Um, what if I already got my refrigerator tested with Verisol? So let's say uh, two months ago, you got refrigerator tested with Verisol and now you see you can get it certified. You wanna get it certified. Um, you can potentially uh, get it certified with Verisol. Um, we'll just need to evaluate the existing uh, results towards the standards. And depending on how you're getting it certified, standalone or with a kit, some additional testing may be required. Uh, what are the costs? So companies will pay a Verisol certification fee, and this covers product sampling, the test results review, and then also the database listing. And then companies are also responsible for providing the actual samples, uh, shipping them to the test lab and the test lab fee. And we're currently working on, uh, we don't have exact numbers for these costs yet, um, but we will uh, shortly. And then how long is the certification valid for? So it's valid for two years. And then if you're interested in recertifying a refrigerator, uh, basically you just have to sign a renewal agreement that no changes have been made since the product was last tested um, and submit documentation showing this. Um, if there have been changes since the product was tested, uh, we can work with you to um, develop specific testing that we need to do to um, measure those changes. And then that's all I have. Great. Uh, before we transition to Tom, I just want to encourage everyone to submit questions or comments, reactions uh, to these like requirements and also process that you're seeing. Um, and so, yeah, with that, uh, Tom, would you want to take us through the energy service calculation? All right. Um, so in this, uh, this section, we're going to cover um, what the energy service calculations are and what changes will be needed to add refrigerators to them. Um, so the energy service calculation or ESC, I like to call it um, because we love abbreviations, is um, it's a model that estimates the runtime and energy service. So that's like your watt hours per day, your daily energy service um, based on um, a bunch of different assumptions and parameters and sort of all the test results. Um, we, we sort of synthesize all the um, test results for the product. Um, they go into this model and we get out the daily run times. And so we can go to the next slide, please. Um, this is just, uh, just to show where those results or um, show up in the spec sheet, basically everything in this table comes from the energy service calculations. 
So this is this is the um, Vericell spec sheet for a solar home system kit. And it shows the runtime for each appliance used alone, used in combination, um, used in a, um, in, in the, there can be different combinations. There can be advertised ones or um, a standard one that we use as a benchmark for comparison. Um, so all those runtimes and the available daily electrical energy, watt hours per day, um, and the full battery runtime, those results all come from the energy service calculations. Um, and so just, um, oh, can you go forward a little bit? Sorry, I forgot to fix that. Thank you. Um, so just to look uh, quickly inside the, the black box of the energy service calculation model, um, we take the either the available solar energy or for the full battery runtime, it's just the um, energy available from a full charge with a battery. We allocate that to the appliances based on um, how they're advertised or based on our standardized example use profile. Then we apply any energy losses in the ports that connect those appliances to um, the battery. Then if we're talking about solar runtime, we assume that some usage of the appliance will be in the daytime and some will be at night. Um, and the, the nighttime use uh, goes through the, the energy for nighttime use goes through the main battery. And so there's some loss there. Then um, we use the measured, um, measured power consumption or assumed power consumption, depending on if the appliance is included with the kit or not. Um, to figure out the runtime for each appliance. Um, and so that's that's just a quick walkthrough of how the energy service calculation works. And it's it's implemented in a really complicated Excel spreadsheet, but this is the basic, uh, and, and there, there's some details that I glossed over here, but this is the, the basic procedure. Um, so to, to add refrigerators to this model, um, we make some general assumptions and simplifications. And so first of all, we define the runtime of a refrigerator as the duration when it is actively maintaining its temperature. So because a refrigerator cycles on and off, the runtime, we're, we're just calling the time when it is powered and able to maintain its temperature. So that doesn't include what um, the, IEC test methods called a holdover time, which is um, when it has it no longer has power, but the temperature is still within an acceptable range. So that that we're not including in the definition of runtime. Um, a refrigerator, we make the simplifying assumption that it's just a constant power load that cycles on and off with a known duty cycle. Um, and we know that that's not really true, but that's just to simplify the calculations. Um, and so we assume that that duty cycle and compressor power are going to be constant throughout the day. And we also know that that if people are opening the door more during the day or it's warmer during the day, then actually the, it's going to consume more energy during the day and less at night. But that's another simplification. And we also make the um, assumption um, that a refrigerator is needs to be running for a minimum of 24 hours after a day of solar charging. Um, because if it's not able to maintain its temperature, then um, it's not able to perform its function. So you can go ahead. Thank you. Um, so the, the two there are two main changes um, for to add refrigerators to this energy service calculation model. The first one is the way we allocate energy to the uh, appliances without refrigerators, energy is allocated in proportion to the advertised runtime or the example runtime. Um, and with refrigerators, we allocate the energy to the refrigerator first um, so that it can perform its uh, 24 hours or whatever its advertised runtime is. And the other change is um, in the, the way we handle um, standby loss or self-consumption, which is the power that's consumed by the system when all the appliances are turned off. So it's just like the power consumed by the controller itself. 
And without refrigerators, we assume that standby loss, um, we, we include 15 hours of standby loss. And that is intended to um, account for you know, someone maybe, um, maybe uh, using the, there, there could be a period of time between when the product is finished charging and when someone uses it. And we don't really know how long that period is, but we, we assume 15 hours as a sort of basic um, general assumption. And so that, that could mean that a person uses a light in the evening and then turns it off all night and then uses it again in the morning. Um, and, and the reason for that is just that it becomes technically quite complicated to calculate the actual duration of self-consumption and it makes assumptions about how people are, uh, or requires information about how people are gonna be using the product. But with refrigerators, we have a little bit more information because we know that the refrigerator needs to run for either 24 hours or however long it's advertised to run. And so since we know that runtime, we can, um, we can uh, use it to us to calculate the a more accurate estimate of the self consumption. Um, so you can go to the next slide, please. Um, so just to illustrate the way the, I think the most significant change is the energy allocation. So this is an example of how energy could be allocated in a, a hypothetical system without a refrigerator. And so we um, this this product has some LED lights and a TV. And it's advertised, um, or we assume for our example use profile, the LED lights can run for four hours, and that uses a certain amount of energy. The TV can run for two hours, and that uses a certain amount of energy. And so if you add up all those energy values, you'd get 108 watt hours. But then if we were to test this product and we find that the measured available energy from a day of solar charging is only 81 watt hours, um, then we would scale all the run times down. So the LED bulbs would get three hours and the TV would get one and a half hours. So when we add a refrigerator, um, then this is a slightly, the, the, we're, for this example, the refrigerator uses a hundred watt hours. So it's a, a very small refrigerator. Um, and so, so if we add up the advertised, uh, the, the energy in the advertised or example use case, we get 208 watt hours. Um, if we were to measure the product and only 154 watt hours are available, then the refrigerator stays the same and all the other appliances are scaled down to use whatever energy is left over after the refrigerator takes its 100 watt hour chunk. So, um, the, the main impacts of these changes, um, the impact of energy allocation change is that the refrigerator runtime will basically always equal the advertised or example value, which is going to be 24 hours and less a longer runtime is advertised um, if the product can support it. Um, and the runtime for other appliances will be reduced more than if proportional allocation is used. Um, and, and so that we, we think that would accurately reflect the, the case where the refrigerator is being run 24 hours a day, um, maintaining its temperature. And the impact of the standby loss change for most products that have a small self-consumption, it's going to be a, a minor impact. Um, but the runtime and the energy service will be reduced, um, especially for products with High self-consumption, or if you if the if the product advertises a long refrigerator runtime, um, and the results should more accurately reflect the actual performance that way, um, because we're not underestimating the self-consumption. And I saw a question about whether the twenty-four hour runtime includes the charging time, and that is yes, it does. So in our test procedure, we we use a simulated seven hour charging cycle that provides five kilowatt hours per square meter um, of solar resource. Um, well, it simulates the performance of the PV module um, over a solar day. 
that and and we use a seven hour cycle um and and so the the solid when we talk about daytime use that means the use during that seven hour charging period and so the total solar runtime is the daytime plus the nighttime use and yeah i can explain a little bit more what i mean by self-consumption also um that's just we in in the um iec 62257-9-5 we call that standby loss which i think is a confusing term also um but that's it's the power consumption of the um and so this is this is uh, only applicable to solar energy kits and so what this is how we measure the self consumption is we plug in the appliances but don't turn them on we plug in the solar panel but put it face down on an opaque surface so we're basically simulating the or we're measuring the power consumption of the product um, in the dark with all the appliances turned off but connected and the if it has a main power switch that power switch is turned on but none of the functions of the product are being used so that would include the power consumption of the um, the charge controller the pay as you go system if it includes pay as you go um, and any other functions that are operating um, that can't be turned off it does not include the self discharge um, internal to the battery because we we don't measure that And I think that's my part. Great. Thanks so much, Tom. Thank you. Great. Then now we'll go into the Q&A session. I already saw a couple of questions um, popping up, and Tom has just answered one already. Um, and so maybe let's go back, uh, take this one by one then. Uh, the first question, uh, it's about, can we talk more about why solar direct refrigerator and freezer cannot currently be tested? Are they including the standards uh, and IEC test method being developed? Uh, what's needed to include them and how long is the minimum time that you foresee this taking? And I think I can answer part of this question and maybe like Maggie can answer the other part. <laughs> Yeah, and I will say for solar direct drive refrigerators uh, and freezer, they can currently be tested uh, based on the global leap uh, off grid and weak grid refrigerator test method. Um, it's included in there. Um, and for folks who, who know this effort that we're trying to uh, work in the IEC technical committee to set up a new uh, IEC test method for uh, off-grid and weekly refrigerator, which will be largely based on uh, a lot of test method that we created through the global leap uh, process. Um, I think like a lot of those like solar direct drive refrigerator testing will kind of like carry through into that form. And so we do envision to include solar direct drive uh, in the future IEC test method if possible. Um, and I guess like, to answer like why the solar direct drive refrigerator is not included in the current quality standard. So I'll give it to Meg to answer this part and when we, we think uh, the future could be for solar direct drive. I think one of the primary reasons that we don't have it included yet is because we need to figure out how we would do those same energy service calculations that Tom, Tom walked you through for um, a solar direct drive refrigerator because since it's not dependent on the battery of the solar home system kit, there's um, there are new new things for us to consider. Um, so that's that's one one piece of it. Um, the other part is that there are several um, characteristics of solar direct drive refrigerators where um, they it it may be appropriate for um, because of the way they operate for them to not necessarily hold that lower temperature um, at all times, or, or there may be some standards that need to be relaxed slightly to include the solar direct drive refrigerators or, or strengthened. And so we're um, basically, we need to put a little bit more thought and we felt like those deserved a separate, um, separate effort to include in the standards. Um, and Yes. Did you already answer the how long it would take, Elisa? <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> so we we anticipate um, that that 
would take several months um, of of work to to um, include, though we're not exactly certain when that timeline would start. Yeah, and I think a lot of the timeline questions kind of related to uh, you know the data availability issue as well. And I think for the Verisol program, we tested a few solar direct drive refrigerator. We obviously still in the process of, of like refining that testing process. But like to be able to uh, create quality standards, having that baseline to like uh, set the benchmark, I think we do need a couple more data set, uh, which will make us a little bit more comfortable, like setting a realistic, uh, you know, requirement and targets uh, for solar direct drive refrigerators to meet. And obviously, there's quite a lot we can reference from um, the WHO, uh, you know, the QS, but obviously it's like uh, talking about a different use case, a different use scenario. And so this is where I think like more data collection, research, evidence-based approach will just be very helpful there. And so, yeah, we don't have an exact answer to how long exactly this will take yet. <laughs> All right, and uh, taking another question from Joe Fernandez. Joe said, this is a simple question. <laughs> um, does Verisol and its collaborator have information that there is confirmed demand for solar energy kits with refrigerator? And the reason to inquire this is because the capacity of a solar energy kit required to power most energy efficient DC refrigerator is quite high. Combining the cost for a higher capacity solar energy kit and DC compressor refrigerator, which has much higher cost than DC compressor refrigerator makes the cost of the whole package too high for most end users in off-grid solar market. Um, I guess I'm, anyone would like to take this? <laughs> yeah, I can take it. Um, I don't have an exact number, but we have been hearing from uh, companies that have certified solar energy kits um, for a little while now that they've been interested in getting um, or including refrigerators in the scope of our certification. So. Um, yes, we do have confirmed demand. Um, we'll see how, ma how many kits actually get certified through this um, pathway. Um, and then I think this can be coupled with the next question from Samanti about why um, the limit is 350 watts. So the limit is 350 watts only for solar home system kits um, or refrigerators that are getting certified as part of a solar home system kit. And that's because the IEC standards that we're operating under um, currently only go up to this um, watt peak. So, um, but if you're getting your refrigerator certified standalone, then there is, um, I don't, is there no limit? I'm not sure if there's no limit, but uh, we don't have a limit currently for um, what size product it would, what size solar energy system it would be used with. And I, I can also add that, um... I know that there is a lot of interest in adding um, solar energy kits with AC outputs to the um, to the scope of our certification, and that is um, something that we are interested in doing, um, and that would open up the um, ability to use AC compressor refrigerators. Great. Moving and on. I can to also the, address oh. the question about self discharge affecting the runtime. Um, so when we test a product, when when we test the battery, we charge the battery and then discharge it within 24 hours. And so there's some amount of self discharge that is taken into account um, by by that. And so any self discharge within that. Uh, that period will be included in our um, in our results, just because um, there's no way you can test the battery without that self discharge happening. Um, the The self discharge would mainly be an issue if a, if a product was was charged and then not used for some for several days um, and then was used. And so that I think if we're talking about a a system with a refrigerator that's being used all the time, in that use case, the self-discharge is not going to be a major factor. If you're talking about a, 
uh, solar lantern where somebody might charge it and then put it in the closet for a month and then use it, then the self-discharge could be a significant factor. Um, and of course, there are so many different use cases that it's hard to say. Great. And I see there are more questions actually in the chat box also. Uh, so a question from Leo. Yes, am I right in thinking that the test method and proposed standards are being open for industry consultation for quite some time? Were question raised on testing more real life variable like those made today mentioned before? It would be helpful to hear your thoughts or points on how modification to test standards could be made to include real life use cases alongside the initial test being proposed. And I'm happy to respond to some of uh, your question, Leo. I think uh, for, for us, yes, the test method and also the current quality standards is uh, open for industry consultation, comments and feedback. I really wanna hear from you all on how you think on these specific requirements. Uh, we, on the efficiency for assets side, we also run a, a group of technology working group uh, convening like industry stakeholder to kind of like work on uh, the global lead test method, uh, trying to uh, review and also like you know provide uh, opportunity for improvement and revision there um, and so definitely welcome like uh, feedback from you all on um, you know what you think about those documents um, and I think like in terms of the real life uh, conditions is something that we've been very keen to like really get more information on right and so like through efficiency for assets coalition also we have deployed you know the field testing uh, process for refrigerator and they're like running in the field for like the last maybe three, four months now. Um, and I think like the data that we'll be gathering from that process will be extremely valuable in terms of like informing how we think about like uh, the designing of the test method and also the design of the quality standards. Um, and so definitely I think there will be some like lesson learned and knowledge sharing from the field testing side of things and that will influence how we change uh, and revise uh, these documents going forward. Um, let me see. There's another question. Uh, when energy consumption is measured, how many door openings per day are assumed? We have found frequent door openings, for example, while cooking. While cooking, can it increase daily energy consumption by a factor of five or more? Any takers of this question? <laughs> and I will say, happy to answer this too. In the current global leap test method, uh, we don't assume like they a door opening in the current test method. Um, and this is primarily because I, we're trying to align with the current IEC household refrigerator test method. Um, and so like our energy consumption measurement actually doesn't include that at the moment. Uh, there, in the past, there was a version of globally test method that we do include do door opening uh, in the testing process. Um, and I think like it's based on the cost and like efficiency consideration, we actually end up like removing the test. But uh, this is something that we could discuss more whether or not we wanna include and incorporate some of the user behavior uh, into uh, you know a regular testing process, um, and so yeah, something uh, would be great for us to consider. Uh, there's a question on the functionality of the database. Will there be a way to filter results in the Solar Energy Kit database to show only those kits that include the refrigerator? Yes, there will be. Um, there's currently a appliance filter on the database already um, to filter by TV, fan, or radio. So we'll, we'll have an additional one for refrigerators too. All right. Uh, here's another question. What are your thoughts about including tests showing performance in various real life use cases? such as cooling as a set amount of juice, canned drinks, and whey of fish. Any taker? 
this question. I think like from my uh, perspective, I think it's uh, for, for test method specifically, it's about like standardization, right, of uh, the test load. And so in some way, we're not against like creating something that's like standardized can be applied across uh, different use case and scenarios. But I guess like to just going through that standardization process, like to define choose what kind of choose what's the set amount in what scenario it should be used or like you know the way of fish it just uh it, i feel like that would require quite a bit of data collection and research and trying to identify that standard amount and that could be applicable across you know different geography and different like use cases and so uh, it feels like it's going to be a, a potentially future uh, undertaking, uh, but certainly something that we can like take into consideration. Uh, currently, in the IEC test method, I think like we use a uh, you know a pretty standardized like a chemical mix to create kind of like a, to simulate the test flow uh, for for freezers. All right, I think that's really most of the questions, and thank it's you all. Oh, sorry? There's a new one that came in the Q&A, Elisa, that says, oh, do we have sorry. any labs in Africa? And That's also a great question. <laughs> yes, it is a, a great question. And currently, um, for the refrigerator testing, currently we only have the one, one lab, Regent, in, in the Netherlands that we are working with. And um, Riley might have more information on our, our plans to expand to, to more labs. In terms of solar energy kits, we do have several labs in Africa, um, some that are just, that have just been trained in the past year. Um, and these labs are, are beginning to, to do solar, home, solar energy kit testing, um, but I, I don't think at this point they would be equipped to do the refrigerator testing. Um, and the, we have one lab in Nigeria, one lab in Zambia, and we're and one lab in Kenya, and we are hoping to add one in Ethiopia as well. Great. All right. And so uh, before we close the webinar today, I just want to thank everyone for participating. We take your comments and feedback into consideration into the next version, and I will also encourage everyone. Uh, to read through the various policy uh, in greater detail and submit your written feedback uh, to us. And you can access the draft policy through uh, this link that we have here, the various publication, or you can just like scan the QR code now to access the document. Um, and right now we'll like launch a very quick poll because we really do want to know how we do on this webinar. And while you all are doing that, um, I'll mention the other effort that Verisol and uh, Gogla and Efficiency for Assets team are leading. Uh, the, the Gogla team has been leading the, the connector uh, technical guidelines, um, and which is like also open for uh, stakeholder feedback and consultation at the moment. Um, and so if you're also interested to review um, and uh, provide feedback, uh, please use the link here to access uh, the document. Um, and that's really all today. I hope everyone is able to see the poll that just launched. For you all to be able to see it, perfect. All right. Um, thank you again, everyone, for uh, participating today. We hope uh, you have a good rest of your day. And uh, thank you. And bye, everyone. Hi, y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all.